Have a booger. Hi there, I am Inspector Bonnie Emerson with a Constable Orlando Budahan. We both work in the Community Support Unit. Due to recent circumstances, we're all practicing physical dis distancing. Stand back, Orlando. All right. <laughs> we can't come to large community events and presentations that we would normally be doing at schools and community forums, so we thought we'd try something a little bit differently so we could still connect and engage and hopefully provide some tips for people on how to stay safe. Especially right now, we know that uh, kids are home and probably online a lot. Orlando's one of our school education officers and he spent the last five years engaging with youth and has developed a presentation on safety with social media and online gaming. Uh, please remember that we're all in this together. If you have any questions, we're going to try to answer them. Just put them in the chat for Facebook Live. I'm going to, you might hear my voice back in the distance sort of yelling out a couple questions to Orlando and we'll follow the chat later and try to answer some questions. Before we begin, I just want to acknowledge that we're on Treaty 1 territory, which is the homeland of the Métis Nation. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go, Bonnie. All right, I'll leave it to you then. Okay. Thank you, Inspector Emerson. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Constable Orlando Budahan, police officer with the Winnipeg Police Service. I've been a police officer for the past 18 years of my life, so quite a long time. The last five years, I've been working as a school education officer. As a school education officer, we experience a lot of problems with kids, with teenagers, uh, and their smartphones and their devices. This presentation, Safety with Social Media, and online gaming for parents and teachers is one of the most requested presentations that we get as school education officers because of the pro problems that young people experience with using their devices um, irresponsibly or using it without a good education about it. So that's what the topic is today. Feel free to enter any questions you have about it. A bit of an overview, we're gonna talk about why is this important? Why is this relevant to you as a teacher or as a parent of somebody who has a device or social media? We're gonna talk about video games. Video games is very popular, especially with middle school kids. What do you need to be concerned about as a parent? Any questions? Social media, we're gonna be talking about what we need to know about social media. We're gonna talk about what apps we need to know about. Digital footprint, we're gonna be talking about information our kids need to know so that they have a clean digital footprint. By digital footprint, we mean uh, their actions online, their actions on social media and how it can be traced back. We're going to be speaking about predators and laws, so uh, dangerous people online that are targeting our kids online. How do we protect our kids from that? Extortion scams, we're going to talk about different scams where they're targeting people on social media and in online games. Social media challenges, we're gonna be talking about that as well. Apps that you as a parent need to know about and resources where you could get more information uh, about this topic. Wow, Orlando, that sure sounds like a lot. How long do you think this is gonna take? <laughs> this is normally an hour and a half presentation. We're gonna squeeze it into 45 minutes for you. So the article I'd like to start off with when I begin is this article, Teens and Mobile Apps, The Dangers Are Real. This is an article from the Miami Herald about a father named Terry Wilson. His daughter was kidnapped, um, Cheyenne Wilson, and was missing for 118 days. Now Terry Wilson was doing everything a parent should. He was looking through his daughter's phone, 
checking on his daughter's abs, making sure everything that she was doing was safe. What Cheyenne was doing was she was using something called vault apps. Now these are apps where you can hide files, you can hide different apps and programs from parents. And he did not know about this. Um, Cheyenne Wilson was rescued after 118 days. She's very lucky to be rescued alive. Uh, but they emphasize parents must have 24 hours access to their child's phone, know all of the passwords to apps, monitor and review all of their messages and know exactly who their child is communicating with and what they're communicating. This emphasizes the importance of always being current and always educating yourself of what different threats are out there because the threats change month to month. Here's another article. Dad horrified to find vile messages in popular game on his son's iPad. Now if you see the picture here in the top right, uh, it looks very innocent. Uh, it looks just like a child's game. This is a very popular game called Roblox. My son plays Roblox at home. Very popular with kids, grade four all the way up to high school. And if you look at this picture, it may seem very innocent and not dangerous at all. This father went on to Roblox, logged on as his son, and he was horrified to the amount of inappropriate content he faced and the amount of sexual messages he got from online predators on this game. Anytime a game is really popular with kids, um, you can believe that there are going to be predators targeting these kids. Now, I'm not trying to scare you by this, but most of the people on these games are just people, kids, looking to have fun on these games, but there are dangers that we have to be aware of. 80% of parents said they have no idea how to monitor their children's online activity. And if you see on this cartoon here, for the last time, will you please remove the parental lock? This is a reality a lot of parents face, especially parents I talk to at parent presentations. They say, I have no idea what to look for in my son or daughter's phone. I have no idea what TikTok is, what Snapchat, I don't even know where to look. A lot of the times this information can be very overwhelming and parents may not know where to look, but we can't use this as an excuse. If we're gonna give our kids, our children, devices, laptops, um, phones, and we're gonna allow them onto social media apps and gaming apps, we as parents need to know how to use them inside and out. So we need to research, and before I got to this unit, I knew very little about this, and I researched it just by using Google, just by using YouTube, and finding out more about it, and that's where it's going to start. It's just realizing you have to be aware of these issues. So a lot of times, kids are smarter than us when it comes to these topics. App restrictions, we could set app restrictions on devices. Uh, kids find ways to get around these app restrictions. Screen time control for our devices. We need to set screen time limits. Kids know how to get around these screen time limits. YouTube controls so we could control content that they're watching on YouTube. Kids found ways so that they can view the content without going through YouTube. Parental locks on routers. Kids have found ways to get through parental locks. So although we can impose restrictions and internet monitoring software, nothing is going to replace being involved with your kids' activities online, communicating to them about the dangers online, and knowing who they're communicating with on social media and on these online games. So devices we use to access the internet, every uh, gaming console out, whether it's a Nintendo Switch or an Xbox One or PS4, is gonna have online capabilities where you could play with people online, you could surf the internet online as well. There's all sorts of gaming laptops, tablets, desktop computers, and phones. Smartphones is what we deal with the most as police officers in schools. We have principals and we have teachers calling us about problems with smartphones. And a lot of it comes down to education. A lot of parents don't realize how powerful these devices actually are. In this picture, it shows you what's in every basic smartphone. Now these aren't even phones, these are powerful, powerful devices, powerful computers in the hands of our kids. And I've met kids as young as grade four with iPhone 11s. So powerful devices in the hands of kids, and a lot of these kids have no education on how to use it safely or responsibly. Um, whenever I talk to parents about smartphones, I always uh, use the analogy of a car. 
You would never give your child, your 10-year-old child, keys to the car so that they could just go and drive. Yeah, you would have to educate them and they would have to learn and get a driver's license. Unfortunately, a lot of kids get devices this powerful with no, little to no education on how to use it safely. So it's no wonder that kids are getting into problems with devices this powerful and the lack of education. Anytime I talk to a group of kids, we talk about rules and rules to keep them safe. And I ask kids, what rules do you have at home? And some of the answers I get, are, I, I'm pretty surprised by. So here's some of the rules that I have at my house with my kids. I have three boys, they all go online. They still have to follow rules before and after they go online and while they're on their device. Uh, I still really emphasize the importance of their responsibilities before going online. Only allowed to be online until a certain time. So we have to have some time where they disconnect from going online, or disconnect from going on a screen. They have to do other things. Um, kick a soccer ball around, read a book, draw something, play with slime, make brownies, something mm -hmm. so that they can disconnect from social media apps and online games. This is one of the most important rules uh, that I tell to kids. Device is not allowed in your bedroom after bedtime. When I ask kids how many people have this rule, maybe half the class raises their hand sometime. This is really important because when kids take their devices to bed, this is when a lot of the problems ha happen. Because when they take their device to bed, they are no longer being monitored by their parents. And this is when they go onto apps and uh, programs that they're not supposed to be going on. Uh, online predators who target kids online, they look for the kids that are playing games late at night, that are on social media posting late at night. And the reason that they target these kids is because they know that there's no parental supervision and they're easier targets. So I really strongly recommend to parents to take the, their child's devices and charge it in the kitchen or charge it in their own bedroom. Not allowed to go on new sites without parents' permission, so anytime your son or daughter installs an app or, or installs a new program, make sure you know what it is and you know that it's safe for them. So now we're gonna talk about online gaming. Online games like Roblox, Minecraft, and Fortnite very, very popular with kids. What do we have to know as parents on what to look for? When I talk to kids about online gaming, we talk about safe gaming. How to play an online game uh, without that risk uh, to danger. We always tell them, be aware of what private information you are giving out. Choose a username that does not reveal any personal information. So don't let their username be their first or last name. Uh, I tell my kids not to use a name that is um, specifically a boy or girl's name. Okay, I tell them to use a very generic username so you can't tell if it's a boy or a girl or how old they are. If an online predator is trying to target a boy or a girl, uh, they won't be able to tell um, what they are through their username. Uh, also, I always tell them to be very careful about posting a profile picture. A lot of kids post a profile picture of their own face, themselves. There's no rule in these profiles, in these gaming profiles, that you have to post a picture of yourself. Um, online predators, when they target kids, the first thing that they look at is their profile picture. That's a lot of information that you're giving out if you post a picture of yourself. Don't post a profile picture of your own face, make it something else so they can't tell what you look like. Now, when we talk about giving away private information, that is their name, their address, where they live, where they go to school, their email, uh, but it's also other things like their hobbies and interests. A lot of times kids will list their favorite hockey team or their favorite singer or their favorite uh, musician or artist. Online predators look at this information to try to build a connection with kids. So be very careful as to what information they're posting on their profile. So I have a question, so can your username be my dad's, the Hulk? <laughs> okay, that's up to you. If you want the username to be the Hulk, that's fine. Um, again, just be aware of what information you're giving out about yourself. Use strong passwords, uh, so that is very hard to hack. Uh, one, two, three, four, five is not a strong password. Make sure it's a strong password, and make sure only your parents have the password. So parents, please have the passwords to your son or daughter's programs, their games, their apps, and their devices. 
Their best friends shouldn't have it. Their cousins shouldn't have it. Just parents have the password so that you can access that program anytime you want. When kids are playing games, um, tell them to take ownership when they're playing. If another player is making them uncomfortable, they can always tell a trusted adult. So if there's a person on the game that's bullying or making your child uncomfortable, tell them that they could come to you for help. You can always kick a player out of the game if they're making you uncomfortable. Own your online presence when available. Set the privacy and security settings on the websites to your comfort level. So if your son or daughter is playing a game and they're not comfortable playing with thousands of people that they don't know, they don't have to play it. They could go into a private server where they're just gaming with their friends and people that they know. Most importantly, your parent or guardian needs to know which games you're playing and who you're playing with. And a lot of these games with chat features in them, people uh, chat with other gamers on the game. Parents, you need to know who they're chatting with and what's being said. If you're watching a game, your son or daughter play a game and there's a big chat dialogue going on on the side, you need to know what's being said. Communicate with your parent or guardian. Communicate with your kids about the games that they're playing. Keep these lines of communication going so that they go to you when they have a problem. So the first game we're going to talk about is Roblox. Roblox is a very, very popular game. Um, so there's two modes in playing Roblox. Uh, there's a creative mode and there's a playing mode. And um, there's different servers where people can host people playing on their server. So very, very popular. Again, it looks very, very innocent, targeted towards children. Um, but because there's players creating their own server, you have to be aware they go onto a public server, what they're going to see. A lot of times we get reports of kids going onto public servers, multiplayer servers where they can interact with other players, and there's a lot of inappropriate material. If your son or daughter is going into a multiplayer public server, um, go on it yourself with them and make sure it's suitable for them. There's also a problem with cyberbullying on Roblox. A lot of times it gets cyberbullying issues on Roblox because there's groups of players, there's teams of players, and they're communicating. Uh, some um, make little cliques and they gang up on other players, and a lot of kids take this very personally. So. Uh, be aware that these issues are on Roblox. So I got a question about what swatting is and um, tell your kids about what swatting is. So swatting is uh, when you create an emergency basically and you get the police to come to your house and a lot of the times um, this happens in online gaming and kids think that it's a joke that they could get police going to somebody else's house because of messages that they send or post um, about them or to their own house uh, causing a big strain on emergency services. Please talk to your kids about swatting and why this shouldn't happen. Uh, there are chat features on Roblox and as a parent you can change them. You can make them a lot more private. You can disable the chat feature uh, with your son or daughter's account with their character. But do not rely on the safety features in the game because online predators know how to get around these chat features. So even though the chat features are, are shut off, online predators have been known to use third-party apps to try to talk to other characters in Roblox so that they, they could get around this chat features. So be aware of what's going on in your son or daughter's game. If they're playing um, Roblox, another thing that predators use, um, there is a currency in this game called Robux. So you can actually purchase currency in this game with real money. Predators have been known to try to gain other players' trust by giving them this currency. So if you see that, be aware of what's going on in the game. So another game we're going to talk about is Minecraft. Minecraft is a really, really popular game from middle school all the way to high school. So Minecraft, there are two modes. You can play offline and you can play online. So the offline mode is much safer. You're still doing everything you can on Minecraft and you can still build fortresses and, and all that immersive, uh, really entertaining, creative stuff, but you're not interacting with other players that you don't know. In the online mode, um, there's 
online people and they're on playing multiplayer games, you do not know who they're chatting with. Minecraft does have a chat feature where they can talk to other players. Again, you can restrict these features, but you really have to pay attention to who they're chatting with on Minecraft. There have been online predators targeting kids on Minecraft because they know that there's going to be lots of kids on them. Um, another problem with Minecraft is uh, malware. A lot of times kids are really eager to collect different skins for their character, d different weapons, and sometimes they're infected with malware. So that's something else that we have to be careful with when our kids are playing very, very popular games like Roblox or Minecraft. Here's an example of how dangerous it can be. Now, this is a story, this is an article about a man who uh, was accused of child luring. And he lured an 11-year-old girl to come and meet him, and he abducted her and kidnapped her from her parents. This is an extreme, extreme example of how dangerous it could be. He met this girl on, a game, on this game, Minecraft, and he posed as an 11-year-old boy. Um, she wasn't communicating with her parents um, who she was chatting with. That's why I really emphasize the importance um, of knowing who your child is chatting with and knowing what's being said. Because there may be conversations where your child doesn't see any red flags, but as a parent, as an adult, uh, you might see it. Uh, and getting a, a question about Messenger Kids, is Messenger Kids safe? Uh, this is one of the safer apps that I use with my kids, Facebook Messenger for Kids, where you can select the only people that they could chat with on Messenger. So again, as a parent, you still need to monitor it. You still need to see what's, what's, what's going on. But kids can have a lot of fun with Messenger Kids, and it's a lot safer than a lot of other social media platforms. How do I manage my video game use successfully with my kids? Be on the game with your child. So I really recommend to parents, if you're iffy about letting them try out a game, try it out yourself. A lot of parents find it really entertaining to play the game with their child. Make sure to play from time to time and know who's talking to them online. So again, um, Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, these all have chat features in them. Know how to disable them, know how to restrict them, know who's talking to them. Have a contract with your son or daughter so that they know what's expected of them when they go on these games. Check in on their gameplay. Children are more likely to stay safe online when their parents check in regularly. If they're gaming for hours and they're doing certain things, ask them, what is this that you're doing? Uh, why are you building this fortress? Uh, who is this that you're talking to? Okay, check in on their gameplay. Set game time limits, so again, uh, really emphasizing uh, having a time to break from these games, to have a break from screens. Have a screen-free room, okay? so. Um, if you tell your son or daughter to get off Minecraft and not play it anymore, then they go to bed and their PlayStation is staring them right in the face, they're going to be tempted to go on it. Have a room that doesn't have any screens at all. Replacement activities. If you have a, a child and you want them to decrease their screen time, or if you're going to take their phone away for a certain amount of time, if you're expecting them to, to get off their game, have something that they could go and do. Uh, family gaming night where they could play board games with their parents. Uh, some kids like to go to the gym. Uh, my kids love to do yard work, and they're very entertained by it. Um, uh, take them bowling, something where they're going to not think about these games, not think about their phone for a while. So if you're going to take away their phone, have a replacement activity ready that can preoccupy their time. So I'm going to talk about social networking now and different social media apps that we need to know about. And if your kids are on social media, you have to ask yourself, are my kids safe on social media? Are my kids happy on social media? A lot of kids go onto social media and they're not happy. They're depressed by what they see on social media. So we have to ask ourselves this as parents. We really have to educate our kids from a young age about making smarter decisions when they go onto social media. They're educated at a young age about making smarter decisions. They're gonna make smart decisions when they're older. A lot of parents aren't aware that there are age restrictions on these social media apps. So bottom line is you have to be at least 13 years old 
to have a social media account of your own. That means to have an account in Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, um, even Minecraft for the online version, it's 13. For the offline version of Minecraft, I believe it's 10. But there are age restrictions for social media. A lot of kids I talk to have their own YouTube accounts. So kids can upload videos, so kids can comment on other people's videos. You have to be 18 years old to have your own YouTube account or you need to be 13 with your parents' permission. And the reason for that is it takes a certain maturity level to have a social media account, to have a YouTube account. There's a lot of uh, inappropriate things that kids can be exposed to when they're on social media, when they're on YouTube. So please be aware of these age restrictions on social media. Some parents might say, my, my child is responsible. I watch what he or she posts on Facebook. Why can't my child have their own social media account even though they're under the age of 13? The only way that they can be posting on social media is if you are legally in charge of the account. So that means they could post their their username as whatever they want and their profile picture as whatever they want, but you have full access to what they're doing on social media. That means you see everything that they post, every page that they like, every message that they get in their messenger or DM, you see that. It's not enough just to follow your kids on Instagram or just to follow your kids on Facebook. You need to have full access to their social media account if they are under the age of 13. Bad decisions made online can be there forever and this is why it takes a certain maturity level to be on social media. Um, your child posts something on social media, whether it's a picture or they go on a Twitter rant or something like that, it can be there forever and we really have to emphasize this to our kids about making smart decisions when they're posting on social media and think about how it can have a long-lasting effect. Every student athlete that gets recruited today will be Googled and uh, this is a fact of life. I always refer to this slide when I talk to parents because any job you're applying for, even colleges now, they're doing full social media checks. Anyone who applies to the Winnipeg Police Service, we do a full social media check on anyone applying. And you don't want something your son or daughter did back when they're in high school or even middle school holding them back from accomplishing uh, their dream. So really talk to your kids about the permanency about posting on the internet. When my oldest son was in high school, I always told him, treat your Snapchat profile like you would a resume because in a lot of ways it is. So talk to your kids about posting things that are positive, that things that they could be proud of um, because it's going to be looked at after and it's going to be scrutinized to a great degree. So once your kids have that in their head, they're going to be more responsible posting things on social media. Here's an example where it can go wrong. So Laramie Tunsil, a uh, football player in the NFL. In 2016, he was the number one ranked college football player and he was supposed to be drafted first overall in the NFL draft. Team owners and coaches were lining up to pay this guy millions to sign with their team. Literally 30 seconds before the draft, someone hacks his Instagram account and makes this short video of him smoking marijuana through a bong attached to a gas mask, makes this public. Now this this wasn't something that he posted or something that he or something that he shared with any friends. Um, this was some a private video in a private account. So someone hacked into his account, made it public, and almost cost him his whole playing career. So he still ended up playing, but he lost quite a few millions of dollars by not getting drafted number one overall. Who's looking at you online? Our kids need to know who's looking at us online. Parents, teachers, coaches, college admission officers, uh, law enforcement can be looking at our kids' social media accounts online and online predators. Uh, our kids have to be aware that all these people can be looking at our accounts online. Bill C-13. So this was a bill that was introduced in March of 2015. This was a bill that uh, makes it illegal for someone to share an intimate image of someone else without their consent. Now I'm sharing this on this presentation because this is a really big problem, especially in high schools, where people end up sending somebody 
a naked picture of themselves with the trust that they're not gonna share it with anybody, and then it gets out. We really need to talk to our kids about what's expected of them if they're gonna be on social media. Here's an article called Send Nudes, a new study shows how often boys pressure girls for explicit photos. Again, this is a problem with boys and girls, but we see it in the majority of cases with girls. 8% of girls shared explicit pictures because they wanted to, the rest did so because of a desire to please. A situation I was involved in um, was a boyfriend was pressuring his girlfriend to give him a naked picture and if she didn't, he was going to break up with her and that's why she did it. So we need to talk to our kids about what's expected of them and what's expect, what is a healthy relationship and we really need to emphasize to boys that this is not the right thing to do and this is illegal. You can get charged for that. If you share an intimate image of somebody else without their consent, you can get charged criminally under that bill. So it also gives um, people that are victims of this the power to go to police and report that to police. A lot of, a lot of people don't even realize that this is a crime, that they can report this. Um, so this is illegal and you can get help for it. You can always call the police you call someone from Child Protection, uh, Canadian Centre for Child Protection, for information about that. Online sextortion complaints involving teen boys jump 89% in two years. So this isn't only girls that have this problem, but um, boys are being extorted as well. And the reason they're being extorted is because a lot of the times they're easy targets because they don't see it coming. They don't see themselves as a victim. Here's an example, Anton Martinenko in Egan, Minnesota, was targeting boys in the Midwest uh, in the United States, and he was targeting teenage athlete boys. He would pose as a girl online, and his goal was to get these boys to send a naked picture of themselves, thinking they were talking to a girl their entire time. Now, once he had that picture, he would flip it around on them and say, this whole time, you weren't talking to a girl, you were talking to me, and I'm gonna show this picture to everybody on your football team, everyone on the wrestling team, everyone in your school, unless you do this for me. And that's how the extortion scam started. He victimized 155 boys and uh, he was caught. He was arrested, got 38 years in prison. He was communicating with his victims on a very popular game called Fortnite. So again, teenage boys can also be victims to online extortion. Here's an app called Discord, and this is a gaming app very popular with teenage boys and middle school kids. Um, Discord, you can communicate with people while playing a game, have video chats, message them. Deputies in the United States are warning how this could be dangerous. Six men and one woman were arrested in St. Petersburg, Florida for abducting two teens that they met on the Discord app. So again, um, we really have to talk to our kids about the dangers in these apps and games, uh, even if they're in their teens, even if they're in high school. So how do you get out of an uncomfortable situation? I really wanted to include this in the presentation because a lot of people that I deal with, a lot of people that I talk to or victims that I talk to that ended up doing something that they didn't want to do, whether it was send out a video or send out a picture of themselves, they were uncomfortable with doing it. Um, they did it because they had never been in that situation before. If your son or daughter is on social media, um, talk to them that this will happen at some point. Someone's gonna put them in an uncomfortable situation. What are they going to do if they're in that situation? Repeat yourself if necessary. Don't change your mind because someone is bugging you. If someone keeps bugging them to do something they don't wanna do. A lot of times online predators know that if they are persistent enough, they can get their victim to do what they wanna do. Blame your parents, okay? My mom randomly checks my phone. Have an escape plan. Know that this may happen. Have something prepared where you can get out of that situation. Say my mom checks my phone, my dad has internet mo monitoring software. Um, get out of that situation. Discontinue all contact. Delete them or remove them, block them. If your child, your son or daughter has somebody like this putting them in an uncomfortable situation, they can very easily block them. They don't need anyone like this in their social media profile. Report him or her to the social media site that they're using so they don't victimize anyone else. And again, check your child's privacy settings. Make sure it's on private setting if they're just starting out so that they're just chatting people that they know. 
once you go over about 200 followers, that's when a lot of this bad stuff happens. Okay. Um, uh, so joining random groups is something very dangerous on Discord. Um, yes, and, and any chatting platform, if you're joining random groups, just be very cognizant of who's there and what's being said. So now we're going to talk about challenges. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, these are social media challenges that kids are very eager to take part of. And when I'm talking about challenges, we're talking about things like the cinnamon challenge. Um, this picture is the ghost pepper challenge where people were eating ghost peppers and playing their videos on YouTube. A couple years back, the Tide Pod challenge was really popular where people were actually eating Tide Pods. So some of these cha challenges uh, are, are pretty weird. Some are very funny. Some are just dancing challenges and are perfectly safe. But then a lot of them are, are very extreme. Like this one is a car surfing challenge where people would ride on top of the car uh, with no restraints or anything like that, and then they'd use a selfie stick to record the whole thing, post it on YouTube or Instagram. Literally hundreds of people have died doing this challenge, and people are very eager to do it because they, could, they feel that they could gain followers and views on their YouTube. Here's a picture of a, a girl that partook in what was called the fire challenge. This is one of the most dangerous, most extreme ones I've ever heard of. This girl learned about the fire challenge by seeing people doing it on Facebook. And what people would do is they'd put, um, they'd stand in a tub of water and then they'd put some type of accelerant on their chest, whether it's Axe body spray or, or rubbing alcohol. They'd set themselves on fire, jump into the water and put it out before it permanently burns them. And then they'd post it on social media. You could, if you just heard that, you'd think of how crazy, how dangerous this challenge is. Yet people were still willing to do it and put their lives in danger um, because that they could get popularity from it. This one was going around a few years ago, the In My Feelings Challenge, where people would dance next to a moving car. Again, you could see how dangerous this could be. So know about these challenges before your kids do, because it's very popular with kids. Learn about these viral social media challenges. Talk to them about the safety of them. Once you know about the latest viral social media challenge, it's no longer cool, and your kids won't want to do it if, your parent, if their parents know about it. So now we're going to talk about dangerous apps. How are we doing for time? We have uh, 36 minutes. 36 minutes, OK. <laughs> Quite a bit of time left. Okay, potentially dangerous apps. What apps do you need to know about as a parent? You're gonna go through your son or daughter's phone, you're gonna see dozens of apps. Um, which ones do you have to pay attention to? Snapchat. Snapchat is one of the most popular social media apps that young people use today. Um, the way it got so popular was Snapchat has a feature in it where if you send a message, if you send a picture, it will disappear in a certain amount of time. Snapchat really rose in popularity and young people use Snapchat um, kind of like how old people use Facebook. They use it as a social media platform where they can share videos, where they can share pictures, and um, they could follow news events on Snapchat. Uh, there are some things you need to know about Snapchat um, if your son or daughter is using it. You just might not understand about Snap Maps. So Snap Maps in this app is a location feature on Snapchat where it's using your GPS on your phone to display your, your location to other users. So I have Snapchat on my phone. If I enable that, every time I open up Snapchat, it's going to display my location on a map that other Snap Map Snapchat users can see. And it is very accurate. So if you have that activated, and you're in the mall and you open up your Snapchat app, all of your followers can see where you are. But not only your followers, also your followers' followers can see exactly where you are. So that might be something you want to turn off because you're giving away a lot of private information, where you live, where you go to school, um, where you might be at a certain time. Snapchat also has a feature called the Secret Picture Vault that a lot of parents aren't aware of. Um, so in Snapchat, kids can hide files, can hide pictures and videos from their parents by using the secret picture vault. And I'm going to show you now how to go into it, how to access the secret picture vault in your child's Snapchat app. So you want to open the Snapchat platform. 
And if you see an icon like this, this is a Snapchat app. Again, looks very simple, looks very kid-friendly. Believe me, it's not. Um, there's a, a lot going on with this app uh, where it's not suitable for young kids and this picture vault is one of them. They can hide pictures on this vault. So you open up the app. Once you open it, it's going to take you to um, your camera. So whatever your camera is facing, that's the screen you're going to get when you open up the Snapchat app. Now, if you look on the bottom of the picture taking circle, you're going to see two cards on the bottom of that circle. And that's going to take you to my stories. So if you touch these two cards on the bottom of this circle, it's going to take you this to memories. And, and you're going to see different categories of memories and different pictures. My eyes only is the farthest right. If this is showing up, the secret picture vault is activated and your son or daughter has some pictures or they're, that uh, they're hiding in the vault. So now how do you access this? So if you press my eyes only, it's going to take you to the folder. If there's nothing in there, it means they're not hiding anything. If it takes you to a passcode, that means there is something in there and it's being protected by a passcode. Now you're going to need to get this passcode from your son or daughter if that is there and that may be a bit of a challenge. Um, they may be hiding something in there for a reason, but just be aware that feature is there and you're going to need that passcode to access whatever pictures are in the secret picture vault. So once you get through that secret pin, um, you'll see what files, what pictures and videos they're hiding on their Snapchat app. Instagram is another very popular social media app with young people. This is a photo-based sharing app that kids are using for social media. Um, a lot of people have Instagram accounts, a lot of adults and young people have Instagram accounts. Um, if your son or daughter is going to use Instagram, just be aware that there's a lot of inappropriate material on Instagram that they could be exposed to. Um, there's a lot of bullying that goes on in Instagram, um, and there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of online predators who target people on Instagram and message them. So that's something you need to be aware of. A lot of kids go onto Instagram and they want the most followers that they could get, so they make it public. Again, I really remind you to make it private settings and uh, tell your kids instead of rather getting everyone they know to follow them and even people that they don't know, be exclusive of who they allow to follow them. So just people that they know, just people that they're good friends with. Instagram has a way where you can make fake profiles. So if you see these two profile pictures side by side, they're of the same girl. Um, if I hold down the profile picture on the bottom right, if I hold that down for five seconds, it'll show what fake profiles are associated to her real profile. So she's showing this picture on the left, this profile on the left. This is a profile typically your parents would see. Uh, but when you go to her fake profiles, Okay, this is one, would be one that she'd be hiding from her parents. So be aware that they can have fake profiles associated to their real profile. Here's a story from Winnipeg. An um, uh, individual was arrested for child luring uh, back in October of 2019. I really emphasize this because a lot of people think this happens in big cities or this isn't happening here. This happens everywhere. This happens in Winnipeg, this happens all over the country, and this is something we have to be aware about. What the person was using this to target his victims was Xbox Live. So this is a gaming profile, again, something that parents wouldn't regu regularly associate with child predators. Again, that messaging feature is in there, they can contact people on Xbox Live, and this is what he was using. So we have to be aware of what our kids are using and what apps they're downloading. TikTok is a very popular social media app, um, most downloaded app in 2019, immensely popular. TikTok is a video-based social media app, and kids love this app. Kids love videos, and they love TikTok. So kids will post clips of them dancing to different songs, lip syncing, some will just make funny videos. Um, but unfortunately, predators 
pedophiles also like video-based apps. So that's something, as a parent, we need to know about. So pros and cons about TikTok. All these apps I'm listing, they all have pros and cons. Snapchat is a really fun app that you could go on with your kids and use the filters. TikTok has some really entertaining videos in it as well, and you could go on it and you could be entertained for hours by going on TikTok. But go on the app with your kids because there's a lot of great things that they can do with them, uh, but da the danger is there because there are strangers on these apps. With TikTok, there's privacy settings, there's public and there's private. If it's private, only their followers can see their videos. If it's public, everyone in the world can see their videos. And people can send your kids messages about their videos and communicate with them. So there are a lot of downsides as well that you have to watch out for. Um, do people use TikTok responsibly and nothing happens to them? Absolutely. Um, but we have to be aware that there can be problems with these apps. Here's an article, TikTok is a pedophile magnet and unsafe for kids. So an uh, article by Emily Murray where she discusses the amount of inappropriate information content in TikTok. The minimum age is 13, really low. Um, I think personally it should be a lot higher, but uh, a lot of young kids that are way too young are on this app. So again, a lot of these social media apps have positive parts to them where they can be creative and very entertained. Again, there can be inappropriate content and there can be danger there that you have to watch out for. Hiding apps and vault apps. Okay, so these are apps where kids, even adults, can use to hide files from their parents or, or, or from people that they don't want to see these files. So some of these hiding apps or vault apps will look like a calculator and when you open it up on their phone, it functions like a regular calculator app on their phone. However, when you enter the correct swipe code or numeric code, the files that they have hidden come up. So um, if you see two calculator apps on your kid's phone, one of them is most likely a vault app. Some of these vault apps are so um, advanced that if you enter the code and you enter the wrong code, it takes a front-facing picture of who's trying to access it and then it emails that picture to whoever's associated to that app. So Orlando, if they have two calculators, it doesn't mean they're really into math? It could mean that they're really into math, but probably not. Um, so some people might ask, how do I know which calculator app is the Vault app and which one is the factory installed app? The calculator app with memory associated to it is going to be the Vault app. So if you have a calculator app and there's four megs of storage associated to it, there's videos, there's pictures, there's files being hidden in that app. So we're going to wrap up with some parenting tips for keeping your kids safe online. Number one, nothing is going to be education. Educate yourself and your child about your device, about the apps they're using, about the games they're using, and know the dangers of what's involved in these apps and devices. Understand the dangers and be motivated to act. Start a conversation and keep it going with your kids. If there's something in the news about social media um, or about the police and being involved in a social media investigation, talk to your kids. Use that as a learning experience where you can talk to your kids about why these apps can be dangerous sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of resources that we could use to get more information. Smart Social has a lot of great information on what apps are appropriate for kids, which ones aren't. The Canadian Centre for Child Protection, uh, we work with all the time. They have great information on their website where you can get downloadable material on uh, online safety and being safe on social media. Officer David Gomez, he's a school resource officer in the United States, I believe in Meridian Police Department in Arizona. He was a computer engineer before he became a police officer. Uh, very knowledgeable about this information. If you follow him on Facebook or if you watch some of his YouTube videos, um, he has great information, current relevant information about being safe on social media and being safe online. Google Family Link is one I use with my kids where I can um, restrict some of the apps that they get. Any apps that they want has to go through me even if, if I'm away from them. 
Google Family Link also gives me the ability to impose screen time restrictions. It'll time out and lock after a certain amount of time. Use parental controls on your kids' devices. Limiting software, accountability software, filters on all internet connected devices. Okay, so um, even if we put these accountability software on our kids' devices, nothing's gonna beat education and being involved in your kids' uh, online persona where you're talking with them and knowing who they're talking to and who they're friends with. Again, I really emphasize don't let your kids take their devices to bed with them. Uh, set limits for the time allowed on their device and have some screen time restrictions. Communicate early and often with your kids about the dangers we've discussed online. Talk about anything and everything, whether it's pedophiles, bullying, uh, inappropriate pictures. If you do not have these talks with your child, predators will have these talks with your kids. Don't sugarcoat stuff and confuse your kids about what they're going to see. Tell them exactly the risks involved and the dangers involved in social media and online games. Get involved, ask questions. Okay, if they're on a game that they like and they're playing for a long time, ask questions, get involved, check in on their gameplay. Be open and approachable and understanding for what kids are up to online. If you see an app on their phone that they shouldn't have, don't overreact and smash their phone into pieces. Uh, be open and approachable so that when they need help, when they have a question, they're not scared of going to you. They're, those lines of communication are open and they're going to you for help when they need it. Otherwise, they're going to go to someone else for help and they're not going to get the best advice. So before I go to the last one, I got a question. How do parents know about the challenges before their kids? Okay, so parents can know about these challenges by going onto social media. Even if you Google social media challenges, a lot of these new challenges are going to come up. Um, if you go on YouTube, there's gonna be all sorts of challenges. Um, all these ways you can find out what challenges are there and, and know which ones are the most current. Getting a question, should they play under their kid's profile. That's a really common strategy with parents. Um, time to time, play under your kid's profile and see what they're experiencing. Uh, see what messages they're, they're getting and see what the gameplay is like, whether it's appropriate for them or not. When my oldest son, when he was in grade seven, he played a game called Call of Duty. I put the headphones on and I listened to what he was experiencing. Um, after that, I never let him play with the headphones again because there was a lot of bullying, there's a lot of racist, inappropriate language, and not suitable for somebody in grade seven. So I really recommend playing uh, under their own profile from time to time. The last point I'm gonna end with is be a positive role model. Be sure to role model the behaviors you want to see in your kids um, so that they can learn from you. If you tell them no, no phones at the dinner table um, and you're on your phone on Instagram scrolling through, it doesn't work that way. Put your phone away uh, so they can use you as a positive role model and imitate what you do. That's a, a really great way of teaching your kids how to be safe and how to be uh, also respectful online. Again, uh, Canadian Centre for Child Protection, cybertip.ca, kids help phone. Uh, you can get all sorts of information from these, this website, from Canadian Centre for Child Protection. Some kids may not want to talk to their parents about it and they may want to get information. They can call Kids Help Phone uh, anonymously at this number and get information. A uh, question I have is, will we post Canadian Centre for Child Protection website in the chat? Um, yes, absolutely, we'll post a link for that and uh, they have tons of relevant information about social media, about online gaming, about information parents need to know about. That's it for my online safety presentation. I want to thank you for tuning in. If there's time for questions, there is not time for questions. I went over my time limit. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you got something from that presentation. Uh, I hope you learned something about social media and being safe and that you'll, you, you know what to look for in your kids' devices. Take care, everyone. Be safe during this. Be kind to everyone. Thanks for tuning in.